When starting a new project, you should always define your building location settings prior to drawing. Select Settings, Building Locations. The Building Locations dialog box appears. The settings here determine where elements will be placed and how the building will be constructed. When you define building locations, you're basically doing the following. 1. Defining the levels and stories that your building will have. 2. Setting the wall height for each level in your model. 3. Specifying where each floor is positioned relative to the ground. And 4. Selecting the default framing options for each location. Content in this dialog is arranged in a table format. Each row represents a different story or level in your design, for example, foundation or ground floor. You can create up to 999 building locations. Each location has various customizable settings, including name, floor level, head height, ceiling height, and wall height. You can edit the settings of existing locations and also add new locations to the list by clicking. The diagram at the bottom of the dialog is an excellent reference when defining a location settings. When you select one of the numerical settings for editing, such as the floor level or head height, the associated dimension is highlighted on a graphic so that you understand what you are editing. It's important to understand where each setting is measured from, as each one is measured from a different reference point. Basically, the floor level is measured from the ground while the head height and ceiling height are relative to the location's floor surface. Floor level is the distance from grade to the top of floor, grade being zero. Regardless of whether it is a second story or the foundation, the value that you enter must be relative to the ground. If the location is below the ground, the floor level value will be a negative number. The floor level value is interactive meaning if you change the value, the floor level in the model will move according to the change you make. Head height is the level at which the tops of doors and windows sit on a location. Head height is measured from the top of the floor surface on that location. Ceiling height is the level at which the ceiling material sits on a location. It is the distance from the top of the floor surface to the underside of the ceiling surface. Even though ceilings are often supported by walls in construction, the ceiling height and wall height settings are independent of one another. If you change one, the other does not change automatically. This provides flexible control over your ceiling construction so you can create drop ceilings as an example. Relative to location's floor surface, the wall height is the height of the wall that sits on the location's floor. It is independent, meaning that if you make a change here, it will affect any new walls you insert, but walls that were previously inserted will retain their current values. This is helpful, as each wall can be customized to accommodate slopes and custom wall heights. So you want to ensure that they retain those values when you make a change to the default wall height on a location. The last column of options is reserved for framing options. The selections in this dialog determine how walls on each location will be framed. Double-click an entry to display a library or list from which you can make a choice. The wall span table that determines the head sill jam configuration to be used for openings of different wall sizes in walls. You select a span and the corresponding head sill jam members you want to frame over that opening. There are many different default options to choose from or you can customize your own. The intersection lookup table. This reference table contains rules for framing different types of intersections. Infill configuration sets the precise layout of studs, top plates, very top plates, and bottom plates that fill the volume of the wall. The framing rule, the direction which walls are framed. Choose where the first stud will be set for vertical and horizontal walls. Is it at the bottom of the vertical wall or the top? Is it set to the left or the right of the horizontal walls? Or do you want the first stud to be spaced where you started drawing that wall or where you finished drawing the wall? The Building Locations dialog box is the most important dialog box in the software. You should visit it each time you start a new project to ensure that the heights and framing options set match your new project. I hope that makes your Envisioneer work one step easier.